Hello. Uh, it's been some time since the last cub update, uh, or very few updates at all, really. Uh, but I'm finally getting back into it. Uh, time has been a little bit uh, hard pressed to find lately, um, to the point where I'm actually in between flights at the moment. So I thought I'd get stuck in and remove the engine so that we can send it away, get it overhauled. Uh, also got the new frame on the way, which will uh, be here. I don't know how long, but maybe in a, in a couple of months, ready to transfer all the usable parts of this one onto the new one. Um, so let's get stuck in to the engine removal. So a few months back, uh, when I last looked at it, I did remove the oil cooler, uh, I removed the starter and the alternator and got it ready to, uh, ready to remove, and that's as far as I got. Um, something that's really cool on cubs is, that bolt there and that bolt there that you can pull out and then look at this and she just swings out that over centers and then you can get to the back of it to access things like uh oil screen there which we uh, which we have to do every 25 hours because it oh, something just fell off there whoops that's the least of its issues at the moment. Uh, the oil screen that we do every 25 hours instead of every 50, like if you've got an oil filter, so probably will put a spin on oil filter um, conversion on it when we put the engine back on. Engine had about 250 hours since overhaul when it, uh, when it got rolled over and uh, it will get bulk stripped and uh, that resets the calendar as well, I believe. Subject to me double checking that. Um, a bit of a refresher on what happened to the poor old cub. Uh, student instructor, we're um, doing circuits and then uh, the old leap on the brakes, the brakes work well, and over she went. The main thing was they were uh, all both okay, which you can see is a testament to just how strong the super cub frame is. So this cub has a dynafocal engine mount, which is uh, done under an STC and permits then the installation of a bigger engine. Uh, so you can go up to an 0360 with that mount. And what we've got to do is remove some of these bolts or all of these bolts and get the engine crane on there onto that hook there so that we can support it while we loosen it off. Okay, so I've just checked with Michael that we don't need the exhaust attached. So there we go, half inch nuts on there that can take those off. Those ones off there. And around the back here, a few bits to remove, like our uh, heater air intake and where the uh, exhaust attaches is down there to the carb heat pipes uh, so we'll remove those get those out of the way and then we can uh, start disconnecting okay in under here we've got the uh, uh, air filter well that's normally straight air filter goes on there so normal air intake and uh, carb heat air intake there which we'll just remove that bit there because that's all that the exhaust is sitting on and then the exhaust can swing down around the engine mount and we can lift the engine off above it Okay, just about got the last bits removed. This here is the linkage to the throttle cable. So we'll disconnect that so that then nothing else is attached to the, uh, to the carby and we're right to lift it off. So we now have the engine swinging, um, not connected to anything. What I'm doing now is just removing the uh, little plugs that go into the preheating system, uh, which is what this plug is. You plug it into a socket 
and uh, electrically heat the engine if you're in really cold temperatures. Uh, but in Australia, we don't need that, so we'll so we'll remove that completely, and that'll allow us to get those cables out of the way and let the engine come forward. I'm back. I did have to duck out for a few hours and do a flight, um, but I've now disconnected everything, and it's just swinging. So we're right to uh, move it out of the way. Extra things I had to disconnect that I um didn't get round to filming there's um spark plug leads here i had to take off the plugs and pull them out they were just through that part of the mount there so i've uh, rerouted them around there just to allow the engine to swing out so there we have it engine out. Um, I am investigating the possibility of turning it into a 160 horse over the 150. Um, the engine building man will be able to tell us more when he gets it, but from my research, I think it could just have higher compression pistons and it turns into 160. So that would be pretty cool if it was a 160 horse super cub. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, hopefully the videos on the cub will be a little bit more frequent now. Got the, uh, now that we've got a few other things out of the way and um, Starting to get some more parts ordered for it. So I'll uh, catch you in the next video.